So good afternoon, everyone. Following up on the very interesting topic of uh, my colleague Costas, I will take you back to energy and uh, blockchain. So I'm affiliated with the Energy Web, uh, web um, Foundation, uh, and we're going to talk about the Energy Web, web Chain, uh, which is a recently, let's say, developed and launched web chain uh, related uh, to energy. Uh, so we're going to discuss about the past, the present, and the future of uh, how we see uh, the evolution of blockchain technology in the energy sector. So it all started a long time ago. So this is a brief history of energy. So it started as a, um, let's say, centralized system. So energy, decentralized system, energy was produced and consumed where actually people wanted it. Uh, and this was, again, a game uh, changer. But eventually, as time passed, uh, the system became centralized. And this made sense because energy was produced in massive scale in uh, the big city centers away from the people that consumed it. So again, this was a, another game changer. But today, we think that energy should be back again to the people. So who would imagine that 30 years ago, uh, today, we would be able to have a small power plant in our backyard with our own storage system, with our own, our own uh, production system and management system. So we see a, trans a transition from the centralized system back to the decentralized system. Uh, it's very important to say that the energy transformation uh, is driven by the new investments and in order to make energy, energy systems uh, that are complex to make them more efficient uh, in the passing of uh, the time. So we have uh, renewable energy. Uh, renewable energy still has a very high penetration rate uh, that makes uh, the, com the, the complex of the system even higher. Uh, we also have penetration of electric vehicles. We have uh, cities like the city of Amsterdam where the penetration rates of EVs are quite high. And of course we have distributed energy resources. So instead of the old traditional model of the grid, when the energy was flowing from uh, the power plants down to the consumers, now we're talking about uh, the bi-directional flow of energy, both from the uh, generation as we know it, but from the prosumers as well. So it's very interesting to see who is investing the most in the physical assets in the electricity sector. Uh, if we look at some reports, uh, we can see that the energy sector in the last two years invest more, invested more money uh, in oil and gas. But this is the curve as we expected uh, for the investment of utilities in physical assets in the electricity sector. We see that we are, let's say, somehow flattening the curve of the expense and the investment of uh, utilities. Uh, but even now, 20% nowadays of the investment in the energy sector come from the consumers. But what we expect in the next, let's say, uh, 10 years is that uh, the, let's say, collective investment of consumers for energy, physical energy assets, will be almost two trillion, that is three times more of what utilities are going to spend. Uh, the forecast when it comes to, let's say, IoT devices re related to the energy sector, we're talking about devices that are connected to the internet and they are monitoring energy-related assets. So we, uh, the estimations from uh, reports from Bloomberg, uh, HIS, Mark, and so on, is that we'll have approximately 9 billion energy-related devices by 2025. Most of them will be related to um, uh, immobility, smart meters, and controllable uh, loads and IoT. Uh, so, I know that most of the people that when they receive their energy bills, they do not spend more like two seconds to just see the, the total of, of the bill. So people do not want to spend time, uh, let's say, taking care of how they manage the assets, the physical assets they own, and to what they, they, they are connected to the grid. So people, as consumers, who are used to get the bill and just pay the utility for the services. But as we saw, Still, people own assets, and uh, as the time pa passes, they will own uh, much more assets. So this is, uh, on the left-hand side, the utility-driven investment uh, 
let's say, a snapshot of the grid and how the grid will look in a few years from, uh, from now. So, as consumers, we do not want to, let's say, spend time uh, managing our assets. We need more, let's say, uh, easy solutions and automated solutions. So, for example, we want, let's say, a sort of smart contract implemented to our charging station and our uh, EV, so the, AV, the EV to select the most appropriate time to um, start charging while sitting in our garage and so on. So, we like an automation of uh, this process in order to transform uh, the, energy, the energy market. So, above all, trust in uh, transactive uh, energy and in uh, the transformed energy sector is a uh, number one topic. Uh, so, we're talking about issues related to pre-qualification and registration of devices to the grid. How, for example, can I prove that uh, the meter reading that was recorded in, the, in a distributed uh, ledger was actually the meter reading from my own meter. So we're talking about registration. Also, we need to know uh, offers are, that coming from the market are actual valid offers. So we're talking about offering and activation and also measurement and settlement. So energy markets, flexibility markets are going to be uh, the next thing that will come and uh, already is, uh, let's say, disrupting the energy sector. So blockchain is definitely, from, from our point of view, uh, the way to go if we want to move to a decentralized uh, view of uh, the, energy, uh, the energy sector. Uh, because it's a technology that can create value at any time and trust uh, is embedded in uh, the blockchain. So blockchain in the energy sector especially uh, can commoditize trust by serving as uh, an open, as we know, and low-cost uh, digital infrastructure, creates secure and unique digital identities, not only for consumers or prosumers, but at the same time for all the assets, all the physical assets are connected and uh, are transacting uh, for uh, the energy grid. Also, cryptographic signatures are used to verify the origin of every transaction. Um, participants are also can guarantee uh, the recording of the events over time. As uh, Dr. Lima also said, time is an important uh, feature in energy transactions. Um, also, we can enable trustless reconciliation of information across organizational and geographic uh, boundaries. So, what is happening right now? Uh, we have the technology for production and we are proposing and the supporting infrastructure like a digital operating system above the, the already uh, available infrastructure that is uh, all, uh, already in place. So Energy Web Foundation was uh, set up back in 2017 and the mission of EWF is to develop a digital, a decentralized digital operating system for the energy sector to support for a low carbon uh, and customer centric energy future. Uh, it's very interesting to see um, the composition of the affiliates. So we see some uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, being affiliated with the Energy Web Foundation, uh, such as Shell, um, Total, uh, Tepco from Japan, Siemens, and so on. And the interesting thing is that even Competitors like, for example, Shell or, uh, and um, Total are working together in order to move forward the innovation in the fields of uh, web chain, uh, um, blockchains for the energy sector. So uh, the Energy Web Foundation Technology Stack is actually um, an SDK. EWF is not manufacturing any, uh, any, let's say, hardware of its own. Uh, it's only providing uh, the applications, the SDKs, uh, the software development kits in order for the participants to the ecosystem to be able to create their own uh, decentralized and uh, applications. Uh, so where we are now, uh, the energy web chain is already uh, live. There is a main net. There is also the test net where uh, uh, developers can test and load to their own decentralized applications. Uh, applications that are already implemented in the test network of EWF, are slowly moving uh, to the uh, mainnet 
Uh, there is uh, already two applications running on the, on the mainnet of uh, EWF. So we have uh, applications for, uh, car, uh, for uh, charging of EVs. Uh, we have flexibility markets for, from ELEA. We have as well uh, Gridbox, which is a solution for IoT gateway uh, for uh, connecting our house and our assets to, to the blockchain. Uh, a case study, it's uh, a tool, an SDK, from EWF, which is the EW Origin. EW Origin uh, is, uh, is a technology for actually logging uh, the information, the actually the information from the renewables that is uh, produced. So if we are able to log accurately uh, the amount of, in, of energy that was produced from a renewable uh, asset, like for example a, a PV panel or a wind farm, we can easily uh, issue the respective uh, renewable energy certificate or guarantee of origin and uh, trade them on a renewable energy market. There was a pilot done with Microsoft Corporation uh, back in April 2019 uh, with uh, NG uh, that involved uh, a, wind, a wind park. Uh, so this is another uh, real case uh, that started from a proof of concept and uh, ended up as a commercial product. Uh, so back in 2017, the concept of uh, the EW origin uh, started, as we said, it's the tool, the SDK for uh, creating certificates of, for renewable energy production. Uh, in 2019, we have uh, the release of the first uh, showcase. And then we end up today, 2019, a few weeks back, uh, a project with PT, PTT in Thailand uh, was, uh, was launched. So this is the project that was launched uh, in collaboration with PTT. So it's actually uh, the use of uh, EWF's energy web origin for uh, logging the renewable energy production and then trade the respective certificates in a renewable marketplace. Uh, so we talked about the past, we present the future, now we're going to try to forecast uh, the future, and as we know, predictions are quite hard to make, especially when they refer to the future. Uh, so right now, uh, there is a number of applications uh, developed uh, by the Energy Web Foundation. So uh, one of those applications, you can actually visit it, at the website d3a.io. It's uh, the so-called decentralized and autonomous area agent. It's a web-based tool. Uh, right now it's in, a, let's say, a beta phase. So you can create your own microgrid with your assets, a small community with its uh, power plant. Uh, you can specify the feed-in tariff, uh, add homes, neighborhoods, connect loads, PVs, and run a simulation. Um, the next step of this one is uh, to be able, this project that you created, your microgrid, to be able to be exported as a smart contract that can run directly on the energy uh, web chain. So this is uh, some results that you can see if you run a simulation, a 24-hour simulation on uh, the D3A um, platform. Uh, today, actually, there was a new version of uh, the D3A uh, when you can uh, do a simulation over a period of uh, one week. Um, so this is very interesting to see because right now we believe that we are at the right point of uh, commercialize the technology that's available. So back in 2008, two or three people were talking about Bitcoin. Some few hundreds were actually implementing something. Then Ethereum came up. Uh, with the idea and the concept of uh, smart contracts. So more people tried to do things with the blockchain. Now I think we're at the tipping point where the, uh, the technology is mature enough in order to start creating actual commercial uh, projects. Uh, the estimation is like 13, 36 months from now, uh, commercial solutions will be already in the market related to blockchain and energy. Um, so I think as a conclusion, we need, of course, blockchain technology is a tool. So right now, up to now, we have invested a lot of time uh, thinking of the technology itself. But now we need to try to move away from the technology because technology is here, technology is proven in several domains, and we start to think about business value. 
Um, so these are some, let's say, indicative uh, list of uh, use cases and applications. And uh, I think that we need to start focusing on innovation applications, not only for innovation, but transforming actual uh, business processes. So thank you very much. <laughs>